This is a response to a video from a lady who goes by the name of A Life For Myself here on YouTube. I have to admit, I've seen only three of her videos, but I like her already. She stands up for a lot of the same things that I do. I'm making this video so that I can make my viewers aware of this Cretan known as Michael Cook, who goes by the name Silent Mike NJ now. Just when she thought that YouTube had gotten rid of him, he comes right back. I watched this video that he has up on his channel, which he tells his opinions about rape. Go watch it for yourself. I will provide a link in the description. Many of my viewers already know I am a rape victim. I didn't press charges because of the myriad of emotions that I went through afterwards so tarnished my spirit to live. I'm still affected by this and was livid when I heard the ball words this guy spoke. That rape is not real. I will stand up and fight against any person that is like-minded to him. I'm going to tell you my story. <clears throat> so if you have children, I advise you to save this for another time. I'm probably going to get emotional at some point. When I was 17 years old, I started talking to a guy on the internet who showed me attention, told me he loved me, and wanted to be with me. He was living at Maine at the time with, his mo with the mother of his child. He was very unhappy and wanted to move back home to Georgia. I want to note that the guy was 21 years old. So, when he finally moved back home, he wanted me to come visit him. I asked my father who, was, who I was living with at the time because my parents had recently separated. My father, of course, said no to start with, but I begged him to leave until he finally said yes. When I show up, he was down the road at a friend's house, and so I go down there to meet him. He had a 40-ounce Budweiser that appeared to be almost gone. I don't remember much of the conversation because I've tried to erase this night from my memory forever. I remember when we went back to the house around midnight on April 19, 2000, he and I started kissing on the couch. He knew that I was a virgin and didn't want to have sex and told I was married. He kept telling me that he wanted to make love to me and that he loved me. I kept telling him no, I wanted to wait, but he started to get aggressive. He got on top of me telling me to relax. I vaguely remember everything that happened after. I remember trying to push him off and saying no repeatedly. He started to basically molest me and constantly telling me that he loved, if I loved him, I would do this. I still kept telling him no, trying to push him off. He had taken my pants off, almost ripping them off, and tried to perform a little sex with me, but I kept resisting and he, he grabbed my legs and forced them open. He told me that this was normal to feel this way, that it was okay to have sex because we were in love. He got on top of me and took his pants off and forced himself inside me. I kept pushing, but I couldn't find the strength because it was already there. I laid there with tears streaming down my face, looking at the clock on the table box. It was 12.30. I felt that I had to ask for I thought that I had asked for this, but I honestly didn't. The innocent part of me died that night. Then three days later, he goes back to Maine, and find, I find this out when I call, and his sister, who was in her late 20s, answers the phone. I, she told me that I can't remember her exact words, but she told me something like, forget about him, he was going back to with the mother of his child, and how there should I come between that. I looked up the laws concerning rape in the state of Georgia, and from what I understood my case, sorry, I keep saying that, my case would have been hard to prove. 
I didn't go after him because I didn't want to seem like I was crying wolf, like so many girls have probably done in the past. I felt like this was my fault because I allowed it to happen. I met a guy that I never met on that I never met in person in my life. How could he could be anyone and he was a rapist? This is a horror story, one that you only read about. Now this story has a face. My name is Lizzie Ward, and I am a rape victim. This act has affected me. The way I view love, relationships, and sex. It killed me emotionally, and I started not to care about anything. What this criminal stole from me, I could never get back. It could never be re repaid. He stole my innocence and taking my virginity so shaped how I view myself self when it comes to sex. I have and will be seeking therapy because as, as of late I'm realizing that I'm not over this. I live haunted by it every day. Rape is a real thing but it does happen and we don't ask for it. Michael's video is saying that anyone keep losing my spot. I'm sorry. I know where I had to script this video because I was trying not to get too emotional. Um, Michael's video is saying that anyone that says they have been raped is a liar. I was so enraged when I watched it. I hope that even if you are not a victim, you'll see that his words are hurtful. I just wanted to tell my story so I can let everyone know my thoughts on rape. I want to reach my hand out to anyone that might have been raped. Feel free to PM me if you need to talk. My heart goes out to those that are hurting and need a shoulder. My goal is to help people as much as I can, humanly can. So please go watch the video I'm responding to. Sub to her because she stands up for those that are sometimes too afraid to speak. Thank you, Shawnee. Until next time, stay tuned.